What a nice beautiful day. Hey SSD, what are your plans for today? You know, the usual, transfer some files at super fast speed. What about you? I'm going to do some heavy file lifting and store some files for the future. That sounds like a nice day. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, aren't you scared that it will arrive soon? Nah, don't worry. It is real. And if it was, it would take a long time before it arrives. Um, what is that? Oh no, get behind me. Grab your capacitors and get ready to fight. Finally, a much needed upgrade to my file storage solution. I have been wanting one for a really long time and I finally got one. In this box is a NAS and I'm going to tell you all about it, why I needed one and why you might need one too right after we're done unboxing this. This is the star of the show. I'm gonna put this away for now. There's a box inside the box. Oh, this is heavy. Whee! I thought it was gonna be bigger. It's good that it's small, it doesn't take up much space. I like this. Let's see what's in the other boxes. A Ethernet cable. Another Ethernet cable. Okay, there's space for two here. We got some keys, power brick and power cable, and quick installation guy with some screws. Let's see what's in the other box. More cable, power cable. Welcome to my unboxing channel. How do people do unboxing videos? So this is the NAS from Synology with four bays. This is my first time ever owning a NAS. And as the name implies, it's a storage box. Or you can say it's a small computer dedicated to mostly storing files. <laughs> you can also do a couple other things with it, but 99% this is used for storing media, any type of digital content. Yeah, files. <laughs> and because it will be connected to network 24 7, you can access your files from anywhere in the world. Think of it as iCloud for Apple, or Google Drive, or Dropbox, or any cloud hosting services. It's kind of similar. In those services, you get about 5 to 15 gigabytes free. But if you want more, you have to pay. But that cloud storage is a physical place located somewhere on the Earth, in the world. I don't know why I specified this Earth. Can be on Mars, maybe. Hmm. Does anyone has? <laughs> no, never mind. So then the question is, why did I buy this a little personal cloud instead of using a subscription service from someone else? Well, there are a couple reasons for why I needed one of these. I can fill this thing with up to 64 terabytes of data. That's a lot of bytes for my personal use. Or is it? Because I do photography, video editing, sometimes 3D modeling, a lot of these raw files take up a bunch of space. And because I might need these files in the future, I don't want to delete them off of my computer or camera when I'm done with editing them. So far my procedure for file management has been as following. I do a photo shoot or a video shoot on one of those SD cards that are inside of my camera. Um, let me show you them. Here. We, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a bunch of these SD cards. So yeah, I do a photo shoot or video shoot on these SD cards that go inside of my camera or my drone. And then I get home, put those SD cards inside of my computer. It's there. I have a couple of terabytes on my computer, so that should be enough to edit all the content on those SD cards. When I'm done editing, I upload the finished edited files to my Google Drive, or if it's a work for a client, I transfer the files through WeTransfer or any similar services. And if it's a video, like this one, I upload it to YouTube. Then if the raw files are important, like some work I did for a client, or if something personal like a trip abroad that I filmed and I want to keep these raw files for, you know, future memories, you know. I transfer them further to a hard drive like this one from Lacey I got here or this SSD from Samsung. This is where I keep my important media or memories, files, photos, videos on hard drives like this. This is one terabyte, this is 500 gigabytes and they are both full. So I need to get more and more. <laughs> but if those files are not important, I just delete them because I just don't have enough space to store them. But the reason most people, including me, get an ass is because Cloud-based services can get very expensive over a long period of time, especially if you have large files. I bought two, four, two, four. <laughs> I bought two, four terabytes hard drives, especially designed for a NAS, meaning they can run 24 seven without failing, hopefully. And uh, where are they? One, 
two. Let's unbox them too. Okay, don't shame me because I don't have mouth mounts. I want to try this. <laughs> this is so stupid. Never mind. Oh, wow. I didn't think they were this heavy. So this is the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS hard drive, 4 terabytes, And they have data recovery services. These drives have 256 megabytes of cache. And it's really nice if you're working with files directly off of the NAS instead of transferring them onto your computer. More cache is better. Cache is kind of similar to RAM. So it temporarily stores your files and uh, how do I explain this? Cache stores files ready accessible so you don't have to wait for the read or write speed of the drive. They are kind of instantly available. So cache is like instant memory. Correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, two hard drives going to fill up two base right here. Base. That's a kind of cool name. <laughs> fill up two base and the remaining two are gonna be empty and I'm going to fill them up later when I need more space and when I have more money. Because now, I don't. <laughs> but yeah, this should be enough for now. Four terabytes, eight in total. The advantage of my little cloud being right next to me is that I don't need to wait based on my internet speed for the download or upload of files because I am directly connected to it with a cable. If I were to download something right now from Google Cloud with my current internet speed, it would take me around 5 minutes to download 1 gigabyte. To do the same from the NAS, it would take me only 5 seconds. Obviously, to download something from the cloud, you need to have good Wi-Fi and a close distance to the servers. And even then, it's not really that fast. Having files locally available is much more faster. But of course, if I'm on the opposite side of the world, connect to my NAS through Wi-Fi and access my files to download them, the speed will be the same as any other commercial cloud. Lastly, and probably the most important thing about having the NAS is the redundancy. That's a cool word. And the big problem with both of these or any external drive or for that matter any electronical component is that they fail and they die. And sometimes for no obvious reason. And you wouldn't want to lose all your precious memories just because of a dead hard drive, would you? So what is redundancy? Redundancy is making sure that something doesn't fail, like these hard drives, or if it does fail, it won't affect anything. So you might be wondering, how won't it affect anything? If I have my precious pictures on this drive and it dies for no reason, how, how can't it affect me? Well, with NAS, you can do something called RAID. Redundant array of independent disks. That sounds really cool as well. Damn, so many cool words. Very simply explained, RAID means is that you can mirror all your data all the time from one drive to another. So that if one of those disks dies, you still have all your data safely on the other one. That's RAID 1, but there are more. RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 2, 3, 4, 5. And the difference is that they mirror data differently. Yes! And another thing is that I can work or edit my files directly off of this NAS. Base. I can edit files directly off of it as if they were on my computer. You cannot do that with iCloud or Dropbox or Google One because those services or locations are far away. So that's why having this little cloud right next to me is so cool. As you can see, I'm very excited. You can not only install drives here, but you can also install M2 SSD in here for faster caching. Actually, where is it? Ah, yes. Is it two? I only thought it was one. <gasps> it's two. I only thought it was one. Oh my God, that's, that's amazing. M.2 SSDs are really freaking fast. Faster than a regular SSD and much faster than a hard drive. <laughs> Speed! <laughs> An example would be if you're editing a video from your NAS and these hard drives are not really fast. The way it works is those hard drives, the NAS, is, is, it's a computer. It transfers the files you're working with to the super fast M.2 SSDs so instead of working from the hard drive, you're working from the SSD. And this all happens automatically. It's storing files from hard drive temporarily on the SSD. So you can have super fast working, <laughs> editing or editing files or whatever you're doing with your files. Yeah, that's called caching. Basically, M.2 SSDs go brrrr. Meanwhile, hard drive go brrrr. But, as you see, there is nothing there 
yet. So the M.2 SSD is supposed to go inside of these slots and unfortunately I run out of money while buying these NAS hard drives but uh, I could afford a stick of RAM. So the funny thing about this company is that they don't support any other type of RAM besides their own Synology branded type of RAM. This RAM is from Crucial, totally different company. I did some research online and many people say that they tried putting it in and it works like 98% of the time. <laughs> so I got one too and hopefully it will work as well because Synology branded RAM is like five, yeah, five times more expensive than just regular type of RAM. <laughs> this is a four gigabyte stick of RAM, which doesn't sound that much but there's already two inside plus four makes six in total actually that's even a lot for an ass it doesn't need that much ram for file transfers and my personal use i think this is more than enough hopefully it's supported and it works <laughs> well it's not supported but hopefully it works the reason you need more ram is to run different encoding and transcoding applications faster on your NAS and also for cash. Anyways, more is better. <laughs> I don't think I will be editing directly off of it right now. It's more for storing files permanently after I'm done with the project, just store them, not work off of it. So I don't need super fast SSDs right now. Oh, and another thing that I really like about having a NAS now is that I can back up all my photos and files and media from my phone to my cloud. It all will be backupping. Backupping? Is that the word? And they have a lot of really good applications built in. So basically everything is in one place. I don't need to use any other services. Photos, drives, Dropboxes, no more. I'm so happy. Oh, and also you can share your files with other or give them access to your cloud. These are all the reasons for why I bought a NAS and maybe some of these reasons can apply to you too. Maybe you need to store your files somewhere or maybe you need to... Um, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> store your files. <laughs> that's, that's the basic use of uh, a NAS. Storing your files and making sure you don't lose them if something breaks. If you are someone who has a lot of big files like a photographer or a video editor or just a data holder or maybe you're just someone who wants your files all in one same place easily accessible and very secure then maybe an ass is for you. Anyways this has been my... what has this been? <laughs> I guess this was an unboxing, unboxing slash review. Yeah, the only problem is it's kind of expensive, but I'm thinking long term it will be paid off. And you don't need to be tech savvy or know anything about computers or technology. It just as simply as buy a drive, buy a box, set it in, power it on and connect. Anyways, leave a comment if you want more of this type of unboxing slash reviews videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. I'll see you next one. Bye bye.